Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, Selamat Petang, buongiorno to our guests in Malaysia and Italy. I am Piero Tombaccini, Deputy Head of Mission at the Embassy of Italy in Kuala Lumpur, and I will be moderating today. I would like to thank you for joining us in this webinar organized by the Embassy in collaboration with the Italian Trade Agency and the Italy-Malaysia Business Association. In the framework of the fifth edition of the week of the Italian cuisine in the world. The webinar is dedicated to the protection and promotion of geographical indications products. If you don't know what the geographical indication stands for, I promise you that at the end of this webinar you will be quite knowledgeable in the geographical indication concept. We have brought together here today some high-level panelists who will share with us their precious insights into the subject. But before we begin, I would like to say a few words regarding some important housekeeping rules to follow throughout the webinar for everyone's benefit. You would have noticed that your microphones are turned off automatically. This is to avoid interferences with the speaker's microphone, which will be enabled once it is their turn to present. We would like to ask for everyone cooperation in turning off your video, with the only exception of the speakers, of course. For the Q&I session at the end of the webinar, questions can be asked using the chat function in your message. In your message, please indicate the speaker they are addressed to and send it to everyone in the chat. The moderator will pick them up and forward them to the relevant presenter. Please note that the session will be recorded as it may be later uploaded into our social media. Thank you very much for your collaboration. So now we really start uh, with the webinar and uh, I cordially invite the Italian ambassador to Malaysia, His Excellency Cristiano Maggipinto, to deliver the opening remarks. Thanks. Good afternoon uh, to all in Malaysia and good morning uh, to our friends in Italy and welcome to the fifth edition of the week of the Italian cuisine in the world. I don't know if you can see me because I cannot see myself anymore. So in any case, I hope that you can, uh, that you can hear me. Uh, this uh, edition is uh, organized in a completely different way from the way in which we would have liked to organize it because it's uh, totally virtually, totally on, uh, online. We hope that we will be able in the next few uh, months to organize also events live in presence because, uh, you know, one of the important aspects, in my opinion, of the Italian cuisine uh, experience is the commonality, the fact of uh, uh, eating and enjoying food and drink and the quality of Italian food and uh, uh, drink together. It is as important, in my opinion, as the protection of the uh, geographical uh, denominations and, uh, uh, and indication. The webinar of this afternoon is dedicated as I have anticipated, to the protection and uh, promotion of geographical indication, and is organized in cooperation with the Italian Trade Commission and with the Italy-Malaysia Business Association, that I would like to thank for their support of, uh, and their contribution uh, uh, to the realization of this, uh, uh, of this meeting. Uh, as you know, or as you don't know, uh, the Italian geographical indications reflect the richness and the diversity of the Italian agricultural and food products, be this cheese, wines, fruits, vegetables, and, uh, and, so, uh, and so on. And the aim of the system of geographical indication at the Italian level, at the EU level, is to uh, protect 
the reputation of the high quality of the Italian uh, food and the Italian uh, beverage, a quality which is the product of centuries of uh, old tradition and of centuries of work of Italian uh, farmers and uh, producers who, who in these centuries have had the possibility to refine the, uh, the procedures to produce this, uh, uh, this item and to guarantee the highest uh, possible uh, quality. So it is a um, it, it, uh, it is a system uh, to uh, protect the producers from uh, unfair competition, but it is also a system to protect the consumers, to guarantee that the consumers are entitled to the highest possible quality of food, a food which is secure, which is safe, and which is at the same time uh, nutritious and being also uh, um, a part of the Mediterranean uh, uh, diet, a food which is also uh, healthy from every uh, point of view, because this is one of the uh, essential aspects that we need to uh, uh, that we need to stress. So we have to be careful from this point uh, of view to what we call the Italian sounding, which is the incorrect use of images, name, uh, which make reference to the Italian tradition, to Italian traditional uh, and geographical indications, to Italian brands, which recall Italy, but it is not really Italian, and at a certain point can uh, be also, of course, fraudulent, because it, uh, it aims to induce the uh, 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 the the, uh, the consumers to think as Italian things and products and uh, 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 food which is not really Italian. I would like to uh, uh, conclude uh, just by uh, thanking all the uh, friends who have accepted our invitation to uh, take part in this seminar, in particular uh, Professor uh, Filippo Arpini of the Department of Economics of the University of, uh, uh, of Parma. We know that you have another commitment, so thank you very much for being with us uh, today. I would like to, uh, uh, to thank Enchik Azahar bin Abdul Razak, uh, the Senior Director of Trademark and Geographical Indication at the Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia for joining us today, as well as Chiara Brandalise of uh, the Consorzio Piave and Alessandra Martini of uh, Aries, and of course our very good friends that so much are doing in order to promote in Malaysia the real Italian uh, product, uh, Alex Liu of Global Pacific Victory and Eric and Lynn Go on of Euro Atlantic. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ambassador. We shall now continue our session with our guest speakers. I would like to invite our first speaker, Professor Filippo Arfini, who is a full professor in agricultural economics at the Department of Economic and Management Science at the University of Parma. His research activity focuses on three topics, the economics of food quality schemes, assessment of European common agricultural policy reform, and rural development policies in developed countries. Professor Arfini has been participating in several European research projects, and the results of his research activities are published in several Italian and international scientific journals. Professor Arfini was appointed for six years as board member of the European Association of Agricultural Economics, and since 2018, is president-elect of the Italian Association of Agriculture and Applied Economics. Professor Alcini will deliver the keynote speech on economics and business aspects of geographical indication, rural development and geographical indications management. Professor Alcini, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. 
thank you very much to all of you uh, to participate into this uh, interesting uh, uh, day uh, of the promotion of the Italian cuisine of the world. This is the occasion for uh, for me to to present uh, how much uh, uh, is important uh, uh, are important the geographical indication for the uh, Italian agricultural economy and uh, what are uh, uh, their implication in terms of rural development and sustainability. Uh, that uh, will be uh, one uh, of the most uh, important uh, aspect of the new coming uh, uh, European policy uh, for agriculture. Uh, I'm going to present uh, some results uh, that are part of the um, of the work done uh, in the framework of uh, the Strength to Food project. Uh, uh, that is a European uh, research project uh, uh, that uh, was carried out uh, in several uh, European countries and uh, even uh, out of, of it. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to 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 say why people as uh, interested in geographical indication. Uh, well, I would start with this picture that, uh, I'll be honest, I have stolen from a presentation for a manager of uh, San Pellegrino. San Pellegrino is not anymore an Italian company, um, but uh, um, San Pellegrino is a place, is a city, is a, uh, is a, mount, uh, is a mountain where uh, there was a very good water is spilled out. So uh, what they say to promote their work, their water, San Pellegrino sparks with the very essence of the Italian spirit, the casual elegance of effort and style, dine with the finest table with the casual grace of a picnic. Whatever language you speak live in Italian. I mean, we from this picture, what we can catch? We can catch that we have, uh, is dealing with people, is dealing dealing with the style with this essence to understand the sense of the life and food is one of these this concept is also in this very interesting picture that was used by the commission uh, when um, geographical indication was presented in 1992 where you can see uh, products but you can see also people you can see people that at the same time producer but are also consumer and they have uh, their habit their tradition their history and so uh, for this reason they are specific and uh, for this reason they have a big attention for the consumer so um, given to this uh, uh, italy is uh, is uh, is the leading country of europe uh, in terms of gi as you know uh, now, with the ongoing legislation, GI are uh, uh, food, but are also wine. And then uh, in, um, in Europe, uh, in total, we are in more than 3,000 uh, GI. And Italy is uh, um, 824 GI. Uh, that uh, is the higher uh, number of GI in, in Europe, as you can see, more than France and Spain. Uh, so somebody can uh, can say why Italy has uh, so much uh, uh, so uh, so high number of GI, and then the answer is that uh, Italy is a kind of, is a young country, if we can say, because in uh, from the Roman Empire uh, to two hundred years ago, uh, Italy was a, a mix of twenty countries and uh, is a long country is a large country and uh, each uh, um, region each area has uh, own uh, um, climate uh, own tradition and the people because the people they can't move from one region to another region they develop uh, uh, they, their way to uh, produce and uh, to consume food and so that uh, is the base of our cultural tradition and that's why if you go from north to south you will find so many different type of food and, uh, and recipe 
and the traditional uh, um, way to uh, consume uh, food. Uh, is not only a cultural uh, dimension, but is also an economic dimension. Uh, in, in total, uh, is uh, around 60 billion uh, euro that count for the 20 percent of the Italian uh, uh, of the uh, agro food sector, Italian agri food sector. Nine million euros uh, uh, is uh, uh, is exported. That is around 12 uh, is, uh, is exported, and uh, and um, and that is count on uh, 20 percent on the full Italian uh, agri food sector uh, that is produced. In total, we have around 2,000 uh, 200,000 people that uh, work uh, work uh, in this uh, sector. And what is important, uh, we have uh, uh, 285 uh, consortia or uh, group or producer association that uh, support and work uh, to uh, guarantee the quality that uh, the ambassador says before. So, um, uh, uh, just before the ambassador correctly says that uh, he raised the problem of uh, of uh, uh, the, the presence on the market of fake product, and because of that, uh, uh, GI uh, are protected. But uh, uh, we have a different international uh, legislation and different GI uh, in the world because we have a product that. Uh, have a geographical indication, geographical name, but are not a GI. Um, we have uh, uh, typical products that uh, are not a geographical indication uh, in the sense that they are not protected. We have uh, um, we have a legislation that uh, protect a GI or protect designation of origin by the World Intellectual Property Right Organization of uh, UN. Uh, but uh, what is most common in the world is uh, the rule and uh, the legislation uh, given by the WTO that recognize uh, um, geographical indication. Uh, Europe, um, in the main, in the framework of uh, the TRIPS agreement, uh, they have uh, on geographical indication, and uh, we will have a, a more specific uh, um, presentation of that, has developed a, a concept of protection uh, considering a sui generis system. And Italy has developed two types of uh, geographical indication that one are uh, PDO, protected designation of origin, and the other one is a PGI, protected geographical indication. Uh, maybe it can be a little bit confusing for you, but uh, basically is in the PDO, uh, the raw material and the processing are in the same area uh, which give the name to the product, while in PGI, uh, only one of these uh, uh, phases, I mean, all production or processing is in the, in the area who give the name to the product. Uh, other country has uh, the system of uh, sui generis system, like uh, Japan, uh, for instance, and uh, they <coughs> made an agreement of mutual protection for with, uh, with Europe. Uh, and the other country uh, instead has adopted the the, law, the trademark law uh, that uh, are um, uh, protect also geographical indication according uh, uh, even to uh, the TRIPS agreement. Uh, so uh, why that? And this is an example. Uh, Parmigiano Reggiano is uh, one of the um, uh, most uh, famous cheese uh, uh, in the world. Uh, is uh, the famous, uh, the, for sure, the, the more important cheese, uh, uh, Italian cheese, producing in Italy. 
but uh, in uh, in uh, in you in the world uh, they uh, we can find a different type of uh, parmigiano reggiano and that is an example uh, and that are legal uh, because in some uh, uh, in some part of uh, um, uh, uh, of the product is written made in, for instance, US, made in Argentina, made in Brazil, etc. Uh, but is not, of course, uh, the real Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, as you know, that in the GI uh, regulation of WTO is allowed to do this, and that is can be confusing. That is uh, the origin of Italian sounding. For this reason, um, in Europe, it's not possible to to do some like this. But instead, the, the geographical education is codified uh, very strictly by a regulation that the regulation 1151 uh, that has a different um, objective. As the uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador says before, uh, is uh, to uh, communicate the product characteristic and farming attribute to the uh, consumer, allow fair competition, give the um, consumer the ability to, to reliable information considering the product, respect the quality uh, intellectual property right, and uh, give the integrity of uh, internal market. But uh, also there is another point uh, that uh, is uh, um, to contributing the achievement of rural development uh, policy. Uh, so we can say that this uh, aim to contribute um, uh, rural development uh, go in the direction to, um, to promote sustainability according um, what uh, uh, with the meaning of sustainability given by, for instance, to the FAO, where the, uh, we can see that sustainability is the management of uh, natural resources um, with the aim to uh, non degradating the, and uh, using technical uh, that are appropriate, economic, viable, and socially, uh, socially accepted. So the assumption is that uh, GI can contribute to rural development uh, to their positive impact on rural area in terms of environmental, economic and social effect. But of course, the outcome is not uh, guarantee, is a challenge. Um, we have to say that the producer of GI, at least in raw in, in Europe, the, the most uh, uh, higher number of producers, they are in a very remote area and they are dealing with a small volume of uh, production. So they have a great difficulty to trade uh, and to uh, protect their, uh, their name and their reputation on the market. So uh, coming back to topics of the sustainability, we can say that uh, uh, how we can reach sustainability um, we have to consider that uh, GI, uh, more than the other foodstuff, are dealing with the concept of the quality and uh, their perception by the consumer. Uh, we have, they are dealing with uh, uh, the a territory. We don't have to forget that they have in their name uh, the name of a region. And this region is not a joke, it's not a case. The region is able to influence the intrinsic feature of the product. But uh, because uh, the region gives a specific element of distinctive quality, but a region is also uh, a production system um, uh, where uh, human interact with them and generate and manage a food value chain. And so uh, the sustainability is also in relation with the ability of the, the actor to uh, manage their value chain. Uh, GI in this sense have a, have a specific element because uh, we can say that uh, uh, we needed to have a, a, a motivation of operator 
uh, no, we, we needed to have a, 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 a product that have a specific feature uh, that uh, um, and then uh, the, must be perceived different from other product and uh, should be in a, in a, in a relevant market and also far firm must be performed correctly. So it's not because uh, um, AGI is a guarantee of uh, searches. Uh, uh, this uh, firm, as a, a other firm, uh, must be managed properly. But on top of that, uh, it's not enough because uh, um, motivate uh, operator must be highly motivated, um, and they have to deal with an external factor uh, that is given by the, um, the the fact that the collective management or the management of the product is not. Uh, uh, dealing uh, the responsibility only of a single producer, but is a, a responsibility to, is uh, under the responsibility of all the producer uh, joining to DGI in a specific region. Uh, and the third element that uh, all the process of production and uh, is under control of third party certification. So this is a, an additional cost for the producer, but give to the consumer the guarantee of the quality and the respect of the rule. So we can say that uh, organization and local institution, um, organization, farmer organization, local institution, they, they have to work together in order to create an effective rural policy um, rural uh, and value chain uh, effectiveness. And in fact, uh, as I, we say, that we have uh, the many or, um, producer association uh, that in uh, according to the regulation is called, are called a group. In Italy, we call them consortia. And uh, each consortia manage the, the quality and uh, manage the quality, promote the product, protect the product uh, against the unfair competition. So uh, in order we have to be uh, to be aware that in terms of uh, guarantee sustainability uh, and uh, to deal with the environmental dimension, the social dimension, we don't have only the value chain, but we have also uh, a territory that is uh, is uh, this uh, rectangle uh, where uh, um, where the impact uh, are uh, generated and uh, and territory is a constraint constraints in terms of volume in terms of technical production interaction with the environment and, uh, and so it's not uh, gi they don't have the freedom to decide how to how much produce to produce or which type of technical of, uh, we, we, they want to use um, as the other uh, reference product because they have linked with a territory and with a code of practice, by a code of practice. So uh, <clears throat> the decision to consider a different market uh, from the territory um, must be highly considered, uh, even considering what are uh, will be the impact in terms of sustainability in their um, territory. Uh, to this aim, uh, the FAO um, they, they they made a very interesting concept. Um, where they propose uh, to consider sustainability uh, let's, uh, as, and the quality related to the geographical indication uh, as a process, where uh, uh, in the first phases we identify what are uh, um, the, the, the elements the, the, that uh, give the specificity uh, of the product to the product, and then uh, we have a phase of qualification where uh, are setting up the rule uh, by the definition of uh, a code of practice that is uh, public and that characterizes the essence of GI that is uh, to be an 
open club. Everybody can join to produce if they respect the rule. Then uh, remuneration is the third element. But of course, uh, if uh, we have a fake product or uh, that uh, make unfair competition, is a classic situation of market failure. And uh, and if uh, there is uh, no remuneration, that uh, make it and uh, uh, some implication with the last aspect uh, that of the reproduction. And that is the assessment of ensuring uh, the system sustainability over the time. So we can say that the reproduction is uh, the result of the previous uh, phases and uh, as is an element uh, uh, that is not guaranteed a priori. Uh, so uh, I don't want uh, to take other time um, uh, but I want to give you what uh, can be in the light of what I said, uh, the policy recommendation for sustainable GI and sustainable rural areas. So, uh, first of all, uh, to let the market uh, to pay, play a fair role, uh, avoiding unfair competition, reducing certification costs and providing uh, resource for satisfying the willingness to pay for uh, uh, sustainable GI. Uh, include the sustainability principle in the code of practice. Uh, strengthening the value chain management via collective action. So mean producer association, group, interbranch organization. Um, support diversification of the rural economy. Reduce asymmetry of information and promote uh, geographical indication intrinsic and extrinsic characteristics, but also to generate public good that uh, should be internalized uh, in a positive uh, uh, their value as a policy externalities. And then uh, uh, strengthen the link between research stakeholder and extension service and the, in the end, uh, uh, incentivize food policy, promoting uh, public sector for procurement and short food uh, supply chain uh, GI strategies. I really thank you um, and I'm waiting for your question. Uh, um, yeah, for your question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Grazie mille, Professor Arsini. And now we shall invite uh, our three guest speakers uh, who will share their knowledge on the promotion of Italian geographical indication in Malaysia and of Malaysian geographical indications in the world. We are very honored to have with us the top Malaysian expert on geographical indication, Enchi Azahar bin Abdul Razab, Senior Director of Trademark and Geographical Indication Division of the Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia. NG Azar is responsible for overseeing all the duties and obligations in the operation of the trademarks and geographical indication, <coughs> sorry, registration system. NG Azar, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, very good evening. And my name is Azar Raza. I'm a senior director of uh, Trademark and Geographic Indication, Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia, my pro. Uh, I'd like to thank Italian Embassy for giving me opportunity to share our GI protection system in Malaysia. Uh, because of a very short time, I proceed with uh, next slide. Uh, Malaysia is implementing two types of GI protection. One is through general system by specific law. That consider for GI, Geographical Indication Act 2000, enter into force since uh, 18 August 2001. Uh, this act not only protect uh, registered GI, but also recognize unregistered GI. To enable uh, the enforce of the act, we also have a Geographical Indication Regulation. 2001. Uh, then uh, our protection uh, of GI also under trademark system. Uh, GI as a, a quality, uh, quality mark and GI as a, 
certification mark, also uh, misleading use of EI. Uh, according to our uh, section three, uh, GI uh, defined as a geographical indication as an indication with identifies any goods of uh, originating in a country or territory or a region or locality in the, that country to territory uh, with a given quality, reputation or other characteristic of the goods is essentially uh, attributable to uh, their geographical origin. This uh, corresponds with uh, Article 20, 22, Sub 1, TRIPS. Uh, uh, from the definition, we can understood that uh, is uh, geographical terms used in the relation to the product to indicate its place of or area of origin and qualities, uh, reputation, and characteristic of the product, where those quality, report, reputation, and characteristic are due to the geographical and human characteristic of the place of origin. Uh, why our section uh, 3's GIX explain the protection given to the GI, whether it's registered or not. Uh, section 3 also explain regarding parsley represent of the actual GI originating from ad, ad, another area. Uh, our section 10 is uh, uh, a state about GI register, unlike uh, trademark uh, industrial design or pattern, no individual exclusive right uh, to the registered holder who is uh, entitled can use the registered GI even if he not uh, owner or holder of the GI. Uh, for the purpose of the definition of GI, Section 2 of GI Act also explains the goods means any natural and agriculture product, any craft, manufacturer product, uh, regulation file of GI regulation, elaborate more detail what are the GI product can apply for registration, what they call class of goods. There are four class of goods. Uh, According to our section 11 of the GI Act, a person entitled to apply are a person who carrying uh, on uh, an activity as a producer in the geographical area specified in the application with respect to the goods specified in the application and includes a group of such person, a competent authority, a trade organization or association. Then uh, our section two, GI Act, explain what is the producer means. Uh, this is our registration uh, process or procedure. Uh, GI application will undergo three steps of processing. Application of uh, form MP, document, consultation, and then a uh, formality examination to ensure comply with requirement or requirement. Then uh, a publication, pre-grant opposition. We have two months to oppose. Uh, the register must uh, satisfy that all requirements comply. Again, entitlement under Section 2 and Section 11 provided all particulars require include uh, applicant particulars, name of GI, geographical area, GI, GI goods, quality, reputation, or other characteristic of the goods. Uh, since 2019, we administratively introduced book aspect specification. We also consider whether application falls under exclusion matter or not. Uh, then, uh, uh, GL also, uh, since uh, 2000, uh, 2019, December uh, 27, 
uh, by uh, Tema Act, new Tema Act, uh, enable GI register as quality mark and quality certification mark. All the details can refer to the shade, uh, shade one for the quality mark and shade two for the certification of mark of the Tema Act uh, 2019. This provision now give alternative method to protect the GI in Malaysia. And also under the uh, uh, system, uh, issue of GI also been placed as an absolute grounds for refusal of trema application, including those related to past GI and misleading GI. Uh, in Malaysia, GI, in Malaysia, GI Act, the right of use, the GI is governed by Section 20, 21. In the case of registered geographical indication, only producer carrying audio activity in the geographical area specified in the register shall have the right to use a registered geographical indication in the course of trade. The right of use shall be in respect of product specified in the register in accordance to the quality, reputation of characteristic specified in the register. Uh, uh, the Malaysian GI Act does not regulate or even mention a control system. The only relevant provision on control are the following section contained in the application form, <coughs> second schedule of the GI regulation, uh, proof of origin, inspection body authorities or bodies verifying compliance with the product uh, specification and quality, if any. Through the introduce uh, of the BOO or specification has facilitated control process. Enforcement. Uh, our uh, enforcement is governed by Section 5 of the GI Act, which states that any interested person may institute proceeding in the court of to prevent any infringement of the GI. Right to prevent others from <coughs> using the same GI in the course of trade in the manner that mislead the public. Any use which constitute unfair competition under Article 10 B of the Paris Convention, Convention, firstly represent to the public that the goods originate in another country, territory, region, region or locality, wine and spirit kinds, uh, style, type or imitation. In such proceeding, the court may grant an, an injunction to prevent any unlawful use of the geographical indication and award any damages and any other legal remedy or relief as it, it didn't speak. No as, uh, uh, as official protection. The, um, uh, the enforcement action are the request of the interested party. This is our statistic. Since we introduced GI system in 2001, we have registered uh, 92 GI. Now uh, there is a difficulty in promoting GI due to the COVID pandemic. No face-to-face -face meeting or consultation with potential GI. However, we have received uh, seven new GI application this year. All communication have due by way of teleconference or video conference. Uh, foreign GI can be protected in Malaysia under the sui generis system by going, going uh, through the domestic registration procedure provided that GIs are protected and imposed uh, in the country of origin and have not fallen into disuse is under Section 4 of the GI Act. Currently, we have uh, nine foreign GI registration and four of them are GI uh, from Italy, from Magiano, Rigiano, Boralo, Di Modena, uh, Processco. Uh, now I'd like to share with you our two uh, local uh, GI. Uh, both GI are very famous and significant in Malaysia. First is Malaysian Durian Musang King. 
uh, Malaysian Durian Musang King uh, was registered in the name of Department of Agriculture Malaysia since 2014, starting with uh, one of our plant varieties, the unique and specialty of the Durian Musang King has made it very successful of GI products. Uh, durian, musang, uh, durian is king of our fruit in Malaysia. This durian is very popular not only with local but also visitor and foreigner. Uh, Malaysia, Malaysian durian, durian musang king is now in high demand with premium price. Uh, now Malaysia durian musang king not only sold uh, as a fresh or frozen fruit but has been used in various industry. Uh, for example, coffee's product, cake, beef. Uh, you can see Nestle also produced a durian musang king ice cream. And also a commercial product. Most uh, product containing durian musang king will get the premium price. And the, and the one I like the most is durian musang king chendol. Tendo is an uh, 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 ice sweet dessert. Normal price for one. Ingredients, but if added with durian musang king, the, the price will up to 38 uh, to 40 RM. One of uh, Korean restaurant for the first time has introduced binsu with durian musang king. Binsu is a famous Korean dessert. Please uh, try our durian musang king. Uh, our durian, especially durian musang king, is now successfully exported to Singapore, Thailand, Hong Kong, Australia, United States of America, Vietnam, and China. Uh, our next, uh, our next uh, GI is uh, Perlis uh, Harumanis Mango. I was uh, is uh, like a durian musang king, please harumanis mango, not only sold as a fresh uh, fruit, but also uh, used uh, in a beverages industry such as juice and cordial. Please harumanis also uh, exported to Japan. Uh, this is uh, our uh, characteristic of the, our mango. There's an example of our product with uh, mango, uh, Harumanis Police Mango. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Enchi Azar, for uh, your very interesting uh, presentation. And I personally discovered something about uh, the Durian King and the mango from Perlis. Must be very, very good products. So now I will introduce uh, Mrs. Chiara Brandalise, director of the consortium Piave. What is Piave? Piave is an outstanding example of an Italian cheese uh, certified as a geographical indication and exported the world over. Mrs. Brandalise has a long standing experience in the dairy sector as a marketing manager of Latte Busche a major Italian cooperative from the Veneto region with a turnover of more than 100 million euro. Since uh, 2010, Mrs. Brandalise is the director of the consortium Piave. She will share with us the Piave case history, how to promote an Italian cheese in the world. Please, Chiara, you can start uh, your presentation. Uh, hello to everybody and thank you to the Italian Embassy to invite me for this very important topic that are GIU, uh, GI. Uh, I try to share my presentation now. Um, today I would like to uh, tell you which is our experience in promoting and uh, protecting a PDO cheese, an Italian PDO cheese in the world. So in 2010 was, uh, was born the Piave Consortium because in that uh, date uh, we, uh, the Piave cheese got the uh, PDO recognition from uh, EU. Uh, 
and the consortium was uh, was born for protecting from abuse uh, from unfair competition in general and at the same time the consortium aimed to preserve the uniqueness and the special characteristic of piave cheese uh, promote its knowledge in all markets domestic and international now i'll let you know where we are in italy Consortium Piave is located in Busque, that is, that is a very little town in Belluno province along the Piave River. So you can see here that the name of the cheese, Piave, comes from the name of the river that flows just there. And Belluno province is the northernmost land of Veneto region, and that is the most mountainous part of Veneto in the northeast of Italy, at the foot of, of Dolomites Mountain. So we are in a World Heritage Site, that is the Dolomites. A very particular place and very different landscape from, from all other parts of Italy. Piave cheese has some particularity. First of all, the, pro the province is a very tiny area only Belluno province. We use only local milk, milk from the typical mountain cattle and we use the ancient uh, recipe uh, according to the ancient rule of the local dairy. So it's something that is going to uh, father to son to ferment to uh, bring the use of this dairy uh, tradition. Uh, there is only one recipe, but there are few uh, uh, different aging of these products from fresh to mezzano to old, and there are different kinds of old piave that, that are concerning the days of maturation, going up to the last one that is piave reserva. And this cheese is, um, goes to the market in different size. The full wheel weighs six kilos, and then there are different wages to uh, respect the different uh, uh, needs of the customer in the different uh, markets. The other cheese, which are very characteristic. The piano cheese uh, has an intense full body flower, flower that grows with aging. So, as I was saying before, there is only one recipe but different tastes uh, uh, depending from the aging of the, of the cheese. It's tender and clear, the card in the fresh type, increasing with the thickness and consistency with age. The color of the paste is white in the fresh piave and it, it becomes straw yellow in the more mature types. And the texture is without holes and it evolves uh, in becoming slightly flaky. The other numbers are the ones that are in this slide. So we have 180 farms, all located in this tiny area. So most of them are in the mountains, and we go every day to collect the milk from the farms uh, to guarantee the best raw material to product to, to produce this cheese. Uh, altogether. Uh, Piave is product, uh, the Piave production is 308,000 wheels per year and more, uh, more than 30 countries know this product and we send abroad about 50,000 wheels every year. And in the last 10 years, uh, Piave got 10, uh, 50 quality awards uh, in the world. And I was saying that this is the 10th anniversary of the PDO recognition of Piave. Uh, PDO recognition means protected designation of origin, and in Italian we say DOP. Uh, and as we were saying before in the previous present presentation, the PDO covers agriculture products and foodstuff in general wine also, which are produced, processed and prepared in a given 
geographical area using recognized know-how. This status seals and protects the timeless link between this cheese and its territory. I think this is the most important things of a PDO product, so the great link between the product and the territory. It means that if we do the same recipe with a different milk coming from a different area, uh, we will have a different kind of cheese at the end. And the recognition also guarantees and protects the tradition that are very important for the culture of the different place in the world. And the know-how that made and make is this cheese so unique, uh, unique and special. So the human approach, the human work is uh, at the same time very important as the link to the territory. The key points of uh, Piave, uh, all the use are uh, uh, in a disciplinary, we call it it's a paper where all the use for production uh, are, um, are put together. So it's the local milk, excluding from the Lino Valley, the milk enzyme that are native from the area, so uh, they are made with uh, milk of the day, of the previous day, so it's still from the area. And the processing technique must be done in the area. Production and maturation must be done in the province of the Luna. So all the uh, all the different steps of the production must be located in the area. And to decide how to communicate to a customer or to a trade a PDO cheese, first of all, we had to focus on which are the real value of these products. So for us, our value to communicate and to, pro to promote these products are the respect of tradition, to protect the environment by maintaining and developing the mountain territory, the raw material, in this case the milk, that must be the best quality, healthy, healthy milk, a uh, healthy product for the customer, we must guarantee every day the best quality of the product to the customer and sustainability production. We live in a very delicate territory that are the mountains and we must protect this area for the future. So here is some example of how we produce, how we promote this product in Italy, but more, more, most of all abroad. First of all, we find the targets. In this case, there are some examples of what we do to the trade and media targets. So we do public relations, promotional dinners for media and operation, operation. We do events that could be exhibition, workshop, testing events. We do important trips. We invite importers or media player to visit the production area and to see what it means to produce this kind of product and contests for food bloggers, especially in our, in our case. Another target uh, for us very important is the consumer. We have to teach the consumer, to tell the consumer what we do and to explain which are the value of the IG products. So we do through website and social media, we do doing tasting weeks in restaurants, and we do with advertising online uh, through Facebook and other uh, kind of uh, things, sector magazine, we do cinema showing three, uh, uh, through uh, cartoons, um, films in cinemas, and we do informative and promotional material that are leaflets, promotional gadgets, media kits, and so on. Then more still to the customer, we do a lot of in-store promotional and information activities, uh, also abroad. We do a storytelling, a visual storytelling campaign. We do an application for the use of augmented reality, and we do events. Uh, in these things, you see that uh, we are uh, switching most of our activity, the classical promotional activity, also to a new way to promote product. Uh, because the pandemic uh, 
progressed to a more online promotion and so we tried to uh, do also new things for us. Then a very important target for us is the children and we did a very revolutionary project dedicated to children uh, inventing the superhero called Capitan Piave that is the protagonist of a cartoon we do on Piave history and there is also another uh, man that is Dr. Faith to, and this cartoon showed to the children how to recognize a true IG product from the fake products that are all, uh, all over the world. Uh, we, do also, we did also a video game to bring this kind of target children to understand this very difficult topic in some case. And we did also a very uh, revolutionary argumented reality app to uh, understand more about this process. We are also doing a, a, a competition in primary school uh, trying to uh, have interaction uh, with the children uh, always uh, around this history about Capitan Piave. Another thing we do is partnership with other uh, IG products in this case, a wine coming from the same region that is Garda wine from Lake Garda. And we did a promotional thing set together, uh, speaking about perfectly pairing from Europe. Uh, in this case, we did also promotional campaign to retailers and the distributor in the US because this project is focused mainly in US markets. And here is what we, uh, the, the chain we, um, we, uh, we, well, we give this promotion. Uh, we promote Piave also about a merchandising program. Here you have an example of the perfect Piave campaign, where we speak about a perfect Piave, meaning that Piave could be a uh, cheese uh, eaten like eaten like that or used in a recipe. So for this, for the recipe, we did also merchandising uh, gadgets, a apron, a grater, and so on, to a recipe book to promote uh, the product and the use of the product in the in, in the recipe book. And finally, we uh, also uh, do a storytelling campaign through a photographic show, uh, uh, photo shooting. Uh, so telling the territory and the value of the product through uh, photograph, through image, because in the new way of uh, communicating through uh, mainly online, imaging are the most important way to promote uh, energy in the world. So I finish my presentation. I thank you very much for the attention and I will be here for any other questions. Thanks a lot, Chiara. Very interesting, uh, your uh, uh, very diversified marketing activities. Uh, and uh, I hope you can give me a sample of Captain Piave also for, uh, for my kids. And also the video game, please. So now we uh, conclude uh, this session with Mrs. Alessandra Martini, Market Supply Manager of Aries More. Mrs. Martini enjoys a 15-year experience in international marketing in the field of fast-moving consumer goods, with a strong focus on product repositioning. She works now for Aries More, an Italian company which supports the internationalization of Italian producers in marketing strategy communication and events. Aries has developed and launched B, a smart collaborative platform which enables wholesalers, importers, distributors, retailers and stores in 72 countries to purchase the finest Italian products, all certified and endorsed. Mrs. Martinez will explain to us how B works. We are looking forward to it. Please. 
Ah, thank you. I'm very proud to be with you this afternoon and good afternoon to everybody. I want to share my presentation so it would be easier for you to understand what I'm sharing with you. Um, a short presentation about Arismo that uh, has uh, told, uh, uh, worked for many years and started working on global uh, communication and events promotion with deep impact, where the latest main assignments were Olympic Game, Snow Olympic Game of Turin and the e Expo 2015, where Aris Moore was responsible of uh, management of the biodiversity park with uh, 8. million visitors and the government uh, uh, top uh, pe pe representative meetings, the worldwide medias and uh, um, the um, high success uh, internationally uh, communication. Uh, with this uh, um, base uh, of uh, international contacts, Arismo became uh, in the time uh, an exporter with uh, um, important success. And uh, uh, concerning what is uh, uh, we are going to explain today, um, Arismo, despite a market situation where Italy is uh, in a mature situation where uh, different uh, market segments are transforming with uh, um, complication for the sectors and uh, the complexity, generate, complexity generate, generated by the COVID situation, uh, Aris Moore decided to invest uh, with the support of an important university, which is Bicocca in Milan, and created a cooperative and intelligent uh, platform uh, called B, uh, creating the world-class purchasing system. Um, the base of the concept of the platform is to uh, sustain the buyers, the foreign buyers, because they are the core of the exportation. If we sustain their activities and vendatis, we are sure uh, the exportation is facilitated also for very important but small uh, companies uh, we have in, in Italy, uh, producing very interesting products to be um, distributed in the world. The B, the Smart Collaborative Platform, opened a window between 72 countries' buyers and uh, importance for sellers, uh, Horeca, and so on through uh, 200 suppliers, because uh, uh, we have to know that B started at the end of 2019 and uh, beginning 2020. So we are um, with, with the platform, we are at the beginning. We have now 200 uh, suppliers and more than 6,000 products uh, profiled. Profiled mean verified, certified, and profiled in the platform. Our uh, main area of uh, um, exportation are EMEA, Asia Pacific and America. And this is for 100% totally granted certified products. An example of some brands that uh, we use, we don't work with uh, top um, international brands, we, we work with local but uh, very specific and high, modern, and uh, updated companies in the market. There are advant advantages for the buyers. They find uh, high positioning products um, selected exclusively for uh, each one buyer because B recognized the need that the buyer um, feel in, uh, in the platform and the platform respond giving a choice uh, perfectly fitted in that, in that uh, requirement. Quality items, quality doesn't mean that it, it is a perceived quality, it is an inner quality, it is a quality of raw material, it is a quality of uh, process, it is a quality of uh, regional coming. Uh, 
that are equal or even superior to top brands available uh, with uh, interesting prices. We talk about too many niche products, um, new in the market, uh, new uh, way to use products, novelty for, uh, for all the world, and uh, in many cases, successful uh, products. These products are available for brand personalization, to whom is interested to, to have uh, this kind of service. Um, in the, in the platform, we, we are pushing all, uh, all suppliers to provide the data sheet and all the documentation and certification that uh, a buyer wants to find when he's look, was, uh, selecting a product. So, it doesn't waste, doesn't waste time. B, uh, as I said, is uh, completely uh, made to give us support to the buyer. The, 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 the idea is to reduce the time to find a product. If a, a buyer wants to find a product, the, the, look, the, the search for this product is very long, sometimes, and difficult. We do it for, for, for the buyer, uh, or inside the platform or outside the platform. But uh, what a buyer has, has in a very short time, the selection he wants. Um, we um, profile the supplier. What it means? It means that we find the product, we find the supplier, we go to, or COVID permission, but we go to visit the plant the, or the supplier, we enter in the present, in the present we make an, an audit of the supplier before to profile it, and it is everything verified. Um, B, uh, when uh, the supplier is uh, uh, profiled in the, the platform, uh, combine the information of the, of the supplier with the, 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 with the information of the buyer and win a, a, an, an artificial intelligence uh, show to the buyer this, the supplier that are combined to, to, to his preference. Uh, in this sense, uh, the buyer has uh, um, an advantage of reducing time and reducing cost to find new products or to find new suppliers with uh, the grant that uh, these suppliers have been verified and these are uh, um, certified companies and um, uh, really um, safe company in terms of uh, production and financial. I want to show you also another part, which is the our case history. Olearia del Chianti is a supplier that gently authorized us to show their profile on B. Uh, is a producer of olive oil. Olive oil is uh, one of the main agricultural products we use in cooking and uh, in uh, uh, preparing appetizing. It's largely used in each part of Italy, so uh, we thought it was a good example to show. Uh, this is the, the, the part of, the, of, of B in the business that is shown in the, in the side of supplier, it is not uh, a view of, uh, of a buyer, but uh, I wanted to show uh, how the supplier works inside it. This is the way uh, a buyer can see the, the chart of, of the supplier with explanation of the company and some data of the company. the number of uh, items the, the, the supplier has, uh, information on, on production, information on uh, advertising, and information on in the innovation, because most of Italian companies today make a, work a lot on innovation, pushed also by the uh, government rules for the certification because uh, a certificate company in food uh, that uh, means uh, BRC or IFS, which is an international uh, certification, push the company to, to be updated in terms of uh, traceability of raw material and proven, uh, provenance and treatment and uh, process, and treatment while the, the product is a combination of different parts. I go down because there are some parts also interesting because 
Each producer show his production plant. This is a production plant for the olive oil, of course, very nice. And uh, they show the environment where we are situated, uh, located. The logistic uh, uh, information is very important. The, the production dimension and the, stero the, the, the without st storage. The company brochure, because uh, um, buyer can be interested to know, and the certification that are um, uploaded into the, the platform uh, in order to show that not only to say I'm certified, I show you that I'm certificated, I, I prove it. Regarding the production, the products, I want to show you the seal about the DOP um, recognition that is uh, typical of the product uh, that uh, respect the rules uh, the other relators talked before, and only these products have. Uh, a product that is a copy of uh, an Italian product cannot have it. But why it is important? Uh, why it is uh, important to the quality? The quality is important because uh, it recognizes the, the place where the product has been uh, worked, uh, because of the quality of ground, because of the quality of climate, because of the uh, quality of treatment of the ground, climate and product. Uh, it is only in, in, uh, in, uh, in the aim to respect the health of the consumers and, the, on, uh, and on the environment. And this is when uh, purchasing a product is something really important. We have also the other part showing this label is important to, to find when we want to recognize to, rec to have a product uh, with a local recognition. Sorry, <laughs> the pronunciation. This is for DOP, and I show you also the IGP. IGP has a code, this number is registered, and when they check in this number, the, the, the product can be verified that, that has the certification, that has the approval, it is not a certification, sorry, it is the approval to show the IGP uh, seal. It is uh, in, the, in the neck of the bottle in this case, and it has also the label that you, you saw before when uh, uh, being presented the, 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 the uh, uh, geographic identification of the product. This is the, the product sheet that we show in the portal for the buyer. With, well, all the, all the information regarding the product are uh, reported. So uh, the choice of the product can be primarily done, just verifying the making calculation of the import of the product itself. And the documentation are uh, uploaded in the page. Now, I'm sorry, it is Italian. Uh, we are making in English because we are pushing all the supplier to do everything in English, but this is the uh, technical sheet for this bottle of oil with all the specification, technica, technical specification of the product. And uh, these are mandatory for a purchaser that want to select one product. Now, um, this is my presentation is at the end. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, again, I'm proud to have had the possibility to, to present all of you, our platform and our case history. Thanks a lot, uh, Alessandra. Very innovative uh, marketing tool. I could see that uh, the importers were uh, very interested in uh, your B, in your uh, platform. And now uh, our webinar ends with uh, two presentations which deal with the results and challenges in the marketing of Italian geographical indications products in Malaysia. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Eric and Mrs. Lynn Go, respectively Executive Director and Manager of Euro Atlantic Group. Euro Atlantic Group is a leading importer and distributor of specialty fruits, vegetables and marine produce with almost three decades of experience in the industry. 
Euro Atlantic has raised the bar in the Malaysian fresh produce import business with a continuous search for new and emerging food sources and have investments in advanced and innovative cold chain management systems. On 17th of November this year, the group received the prestigious Asia Fruit Importer of the Year 2020 award. This accolade is a testament to the company's continuous emphasis on teamwork, integrity and quality. Please, Eric and Lynn, the floor is yours. Thank you, everyone. I'm Lynn. Introduction on the topics that we'll be discussing today. So um, the title of our presentation is uh, to discuss about the process of Italy. What is appealing? and what is resisting the imports. So um, we'll first do a little of Italian food imports. Move on to discuss a little bit about the value chain in fresh reduce and grocery products, uh, namely touching on the imports of oils, seasonal Italian kiwi fruits, and lastly, seasonal Italian specialty produce. We'll also discuss on some of the challenges faced and the limitations um, in And then lastly, um, we will discuss a little bit on the Made in Italy appeal and resistance. Okay, um, just really quickly, um, in 2019 itself, these are all uh, uh, statistics based on last year. So last year itself, the total imported value of food into Malaysia from the European Union is 7.4%. Um, and out of this 7.4%, the total value of Italian food imports is 62.44 million. Um, so we broke it down a little bit further to redirect into uh, the categories of food that um, Euro-Atlantic is involved in. So um, we specialize uh, in fresh fruit imports and products for fresh fruits. Um, the total imports are made up of 78%. These are fresh. So, um, and it's about the value of 5.21 million. And next up is olive oil imports. So under the oil category, olive oil basically takes up 85% of the total imports. That is about 3.96 million. Um, it's not very, a very high value and we'll uh, touch on the, um, the reason why this is the case later. So it makes up 44% of the total edible batch imports. That is about 81.8. Uh, sorry, 81,000. Yeah, so that's that's a really low amount and um, we'll explain a little bit later on. I'll pass on to Eric. He'll discuss a little bit about um, Italian olive oils in Malaysia. Yeah. Okay. Hi, can you hear me, everyone? I'm going to touch on the, the Italian olive oil, which is our main, the very first item that we imported uh, after I visited Parma. Uh, back in, I think, the year 2000. And uh, that's when we started uh, interested in import of Italian uh, olive oil. And we started with, uh, with a company, the Cremonini family from Foley, Italy. And uh, they have actually two brands. Uh, one is their, 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 their family brand called Cremonini. And the other one is everyone knows because uh, it's handled by my, my good friend, Alex Liu, the GPV group, All Italia. So we are doing the family brand, which is of the high end uh, and a very, very popular brand, which is All Italia, which is already being handled by GPV. So um, I, we have been doing the, the brand for 10 years and uh, it has been very tough for us, uh, very competitive. And uh, the last three years, we faced tremendous competition. The competition mainly come from uh, Greece, Turkey, and of late, of late, the last three years was 
Spain. Spanish has come in very strongly. And we have no choice. We have really no choice because we are losing the market and we are losing the market share tremendously. So we have to switch to Spanish uh, because they, they provide better value for us. And uh, that's why we have to switch. That's very unfortunate. We have been asking them to uh, for price reduction, but we are unable to, uh, to get any, any help at all. So now our main, main produce uh, uh, from oil come from Spain since uh, end of 2019 till now. So uh, we hope we will be able to go back to Italy and find another brand which is of similar and competitive value. Uh, this is for the time being, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, the, the reason for the decline and other things later. I'll now pass back to Lynn. Okay, um, the next category that um, we import is fresh fruits. So uh, one of the items that we import most from Italy is kiwi fruits. Um, so we'll have a look at it right now. Um, as you can see uh, from the graph, we have been healthily increasing our imports. Um, and we started about uh, five years ago and to, from 2017 to 2018 there was a 50% increase so that's really good and it has been consistently growing. Um, this is because we actually put in much efforts in effective promotional tactics. So from the screen here um, I'll explain firstly about um, how we present Italian kiwi fruits using brand value and product awareness to the consumers. As you can see from the three labels um, that we have on the screen, um, there's always some sort of representation of Italy on there. So it's either the green color, the Italian flag, um, or you know, basically just putting the word Italy in there. It's just, it's not, I would say that it's, it's sometimes subtle, but most of the time you make it quite obvious so that um, consumers, Malaysian consumers actually know what they're buying. Um, uh, the second thing we actually focus a lot on is um, to spread awareness in terms of education. So um, the picture on the left is actually showing a um, seminar or a workshop that we held. We invited all our retailers from the top uh, supermarkets uh, in Malaysia and we actually um, you know, discuss about how to handle the product well. We even invited the exporters from Italy to actually give talks about um, the origins of the of the kiwi fruits from Italy. So I think this is really important, and you know, people sort of um, get a full understanding of uh, what they're buying and what they're selling. Um, but in the recent years, especially the past two to three seasons, we've seen a lot of competition from Greece and France um, and the reason why we want to bring this up is because Greece and France actually have the same season as Italian kiwis and their pricing is very very competitive um, they have been penetrating the ASEAN market very very aggressively yeah so this is this is one of the challenges that we're facing currently um, a little bit more about um, our recent uh, efforts in campaigning with the with obviously the support and the um, the help of uh, our Italian embassy in Malaysia and the Italian trade agency as well. So this fair called we actually named this fair Eat Healthy Taste Italy. It has been quite effective and we have run it twice now. Last year and during very close to Christmas in Sabah. Uh, Sabah is actually in East Malaysia. And we recently had another one a few months ago uh, in Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia. Um, we think that this campaign is uh, highly effective because it spreads awareness and better understanding of produce from Italy. Um, aside from that, uh, we were also given the chance to actually explore uh, more towards you know bringing in air like air flying in um, products that are representative of Italy such as Amalfi lemons, cactus figs, Boretana cipollini onions and radicchio rosso. So um, 
you know, without without having this campaign, we won't be able to bring in these products that Malaysians don't know of. So we were quite fortunate for the support um, to do this. And I think this food and cultural appreciation should be consistent um, and we should actually run this campaign say annually or twice and twice a year. Um, you know, we should prolong and also keep um, on a vegetarian diet. Um, okay, so we'll touch a little bit on um, what challenges we've been facing yeah. throughout the past few years. Um, I'll hand it over to Eric to explain a little bit. Yeah, this this is a very, very pertinent question that uh, Italy item face in Malaysia and generally in ASEAN country. I I would like to emphasize uh, that we had that European country have with uh, ASEAN. Currently in Europe, there is no free trade agreement with Malaysia. I repeat, no free trade agreement, which means to say food coming from Europe, EU country are subjected to tariff. They vary, but for fruits, it's 5%. For olive oil, it's also 5%. This is what we are experiencing. Whereas, uh, compare, just, just for comparison reason, Chilean, Chilean kiwi come to Malaysia is zero tariff. So my question to, uh, to Italy or to the High Commission, Embassy of Italy is whether there is any effort to find a solution to apply to METI, which in Malaysian International Trade uh, Ministry, to get to, to appeal for abolishment of this tariff so that we will be on level playing field with all countries. Right now, everything imported by us is 5% higher. So this is a, a question where I hope uh, through the embassy, Italian embassy, uh, Your Excellency, Cristiano, I hope you're listening well, so that you will do your best to lobby our country, our, our meeting, to get this abolished as quickly as possible, so that you'll be more competitive with others. Uh, I think uh, this is a very important uh, factor. I just want to say it right now. Uh, um, and I'd like to add that um, the reason why we're giving this comparison is because we are actually currently importing Chilean kiwi fruits through the same Italian exporters. And um, the Chilean kiwi fruits have a different season to Italy. So half the year is Italian kiwi fruits, half the year is Chilean kiwi fruits. Um, and, you know, uh, We've been importing this for over three seasons now, and we actually can identify the differences. Um, and the only difference we have identified so far is basically just price. So there is actually no difference in quality, taste, and appearance. So you can see how um, it's, it's getting a little bit um, difficult to promote uh, difference between Chilean and Italian kiwis to our consumers. Um, because although the high, there's a higher price point of Italian kiwi fruits, it doesn't necessarily indicate that kiwis of Italian origin are of superior quality. Yeah, so this is something that, um, you know, we're facing at the moment. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so um, I'd just like to touch a little bit about, um, uh, just to follow up from the, the previous slide, um, we just want to... Um, you know, sort of discuss a little bit on how Malaysian... Uh, sorry, Mrs. Lin, we should try to go to the end because we are running out of time. Thank okay. you. Okay. Good, five right. minutes, five minutes. Yeah, this, this is the last one. Yeah. Just really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, how Malaysians perceive and understand Italian labels and um, the Made in Italy brand. Um, you know, there's, I think, from the very first 
first few presentations that we've already been hearing, there are a lot of Italian sounding brand names saturating the market. I think that was one of the very reasons why. But um, let's focus more on um, what on the fresh produce industry, so fruits and vegetables. Um, so basically, one of the reasons why we're facing quite a bit of um, uh, you know limitations and resistance is because um, the import of Italian produce, especially airflow produce into Malaysia is, is actually through third country uh, imports. So we are basically talking about Singapore and Netherlands. Um, and a lot of the Italian airplane produce is actually consolidated in Netherlands. So therefore, the country of origin, which is actually most of the products are from a percentage, sorry, not most, a percentage of products from Italy, um, the origin gets lost because there is no clarity in the supply chain um, and um, and the other thing is, uh, just to give you an example, so we spoke a little bit about the Eat Healthy Taste Italy fair. So our recent procurement um, and import for that fair, we actually air flown in via the consolidation hub in Netherlands. Um, one of the, the very, very um, important reasons that we want to put out is that um, in the Netherlands, uh, there are much higher frequency of flights into Malaysia is actually daily um, compared to Italy. So mm. this is one of the very top reasons why uh, people actually prefer to consolidate in Netherlands. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that probably ends our presentation. We just want to list down a couple of uh, um, uh, challenges that we're facing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Eric. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Lin. Uh, we took uh, a note uh, of uh, the challenges uh, uh, facing uh, Italian, uh, the marketing of Italian products uh, in Malaysia. This is, was uh, actually the meaning of this uh, webinar. And, uh, but at the same time, we thank you very much for trying so hard to import uh, and distribute uh, Italian products uh, into the country. Mm. And uh, now, uh, last but not least, I would like to pass the mic to Mr. Alex Liu, director of GPV, a leading premium food importer and distributor in Malaysia for over 20 years. Mr. Alex has been its managing director since 1999. He has grown the company from a small boutique supplier to a well-known distributor specializing in a wide range of premium quality food ingredients including Wagyu beef, seafood, cheese, truffles, foie gras, olive oil, pasta, vinegar, and so on. It sounds really good. <laughs> In order to enrich its product mix, GPV is constantly sourcing for new products from Europe, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. Mr. Alex will tell us more. Thank you. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Alex Liu and uh, my company is uh, Global Pacific Victory. And uh, we've been uh, bringing in the uh, Italian products since uh, 1999. It has been uh, more than 20 years. And uh, this page uh, is a brief introduction of my company. And uh, we specialize in more cheese, dry products, chew products. And uh, the main country that uh, we bring in is uh, number one is still Italy after 20 years. From the beginning, it's also Italy. And uh, we started from just two brands at the beginning. And uh, we slowly grow up uh, to the uh, about 17 brands now from Italy, okay? From Italy alone, we have 17 brands now. And every year, uh, we go to Italy and uh, to source the product and attend those uh, exhibitions and uh, uh, have a one-to-one -one, -one meeting with all the producers in Italy. Right now, I go to uh, the product page, which uh, as your uh, talk about the main topic today is the geographical indication. Okay, uh, cheese is uh, is considered one of our very important products from Italy. Uh, 
I have been doing this uh, Gabani. Gabani, of course, everybody knows it's uh, a uh, number one brand in Italy. It's uh, has a uh, geographical indications. Of course, uh, the most famous one is uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, which uh, I I want to show you this this kind of products. I'm showing you the uh, the small portion, and uh, we do uh, bring in the view and uh, one eight view. We call it a uh, one eight means uh, the view will cut it into eight smaller portion for easy handling. And uh, for more presentation, we will always import the full view from uh, from Italy. Uh, especially for those uh, grand event every year. So, Gabani is from uh, Palabio. That is uh, very famous. And uh, I do have another brand, the smaller one, Boni. Boni is from Parma. Parma is a place that are uh, famous for the uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. And now I have a uh, increase another brand uh, i bring in the grana noro it's from uh, bologna uh, there are many more on the cheese snack <clears throat> right now i go to another page <clears throat> out of the number one product in my company there is cheese the number two is a pasta and fra uh, we bring in the granola granola is from the uh, southern part of italy uh, the town is a uh, Corrado. Another one is a uh, Caputo. I believe uh, all of you uh, here, I mean, uh, known of this brand for pizza fra. It's from Napoli. Napoli is a very famous place for for fra. And uh, Caputo is a award meaning uh, fra. Not only in Italy, it's in the world, whether it's in Australia or in the USA, it's, it's everywhere in the in the world. Uh, I would like to touch on the next page is the olive oil. Uh, of course, my good friend Eric. I mean, uh, they are also doing the the olive oil. We are sharing the same same family. And uh, Olitania is a uh, is more. It's more popular in the world and uh, it's, uh, it's been everywhere in China, in Taiwan, everywhere. So, another product uh, from Italy is Chow Chow, it's, uh, it's uh, focused on the uh, tomato and uh, Chow has a uh, halal certificates. Uh, I touched on confectionery products. Uh, we have our uh, Amica chips. Amica chips is a potato chips, and uh, they are from uh, Casti Uh We have a uh, red steak Vida Vigo from Sicinello, uh, and we have uh, Andico Pogo from Raveri Veronese. And uh, another product is the uh, Panatoni that uh, we. We normally take it uh, during Christmas time. Uh, the brand is a very old brand in Italy. It's Loison. And uh, for grains, for rice product, risotto is always the, uh, the, the one of the main ingredients that are export from Italy. We have Scotti. Scotti is a very famous brand in uh, Italy. Besides Scotty, I do have uh, another brand, uh, Fio Tiriso. It's also mini the, the risotto rice. I go very quick into the premium products. Uh, we have uh, caviar. Caviar is from uh, Breta di Piave. It is called Caviar Caviari. This, there's a uh, number one brand. I have two brands for uh, caviar. Another one is the is the La Rasticella. And uh, for truffle, I have a uh, Sabadino truffle. Uh, they have a uh, black truffle, white truffle, summer truffle, winter truffle from Elba. 
I think everybody know Elba uh, Truffle. And lastly, I just uh, want to conclude that uh, we do carry a lot of products from Italy and, uh, and uh, we continue sourcing from Italy. We, we don't encounter much problem uh, from the freight from uh, Italy to Malaysia, except this year. Yes, this year we do encounter some air freight problem, some sea freight problems. And uh, that's end of my presentation. And uh, I hope uh, all the producers from Italy, if uh, they're interested to contact me or even contact my good friend uh, Eric, uh, please do so. I mean, we are, we are more than happy to work with you guys uh, from Italy producer that uh, because we, we do love Italian cuisine and uh, in Malaysia and uh, there's a lot of Italian cuisine in Malaysia, Italian restaurants. And uh, the people here, we, I mean, we love Italian food and of course the French food as well. But the number one is still the Italian food. Okay, that's all of my uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Uh, I think we all agree that uh, Italian food is number one. And uh, I, would, uh, I would like also to thank you for all uh, this nice product that uh, I personally buy regularly in the Malaysian uh, KL markets. So now <laughs> I, I, I know who I have to thank for this. <laughs> so I guess we, we need to skip uh, the Q&A session because uh, actually it's quite late and everybody must go back to their business. Uh, so I think that uh, in, we have come uh, uh, to the end of this uh, webinar. I hope that you are now more aware of the meaning of geographical indication. And uh, anyway, we are going to provide you with all the presentations and you can further deepen the subject with the relevant speakers. Yes, I would like now uh, to call upon uh, once again His Excellency Ambassador Maggi Pinto for uh, the final remarks. Thank you very much to all of you for joining the webinar today. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Pietro. Thank you, um, everybody, <coughs> for attending this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, personally, I have learned many, many things. Uh, I would like to, uh, to thank, first of all, Enchik Azar bin Abdul Razab for explaining us this Malaysian system, which is very interesting, not only, but I have discovered, for example, and I didn't know, that there are already some Italian products which are protected under the, uh, the Malaysian uh, uh, regulations. And uh, uh, this is very important uh, for us, and I think that uh, we have found a new uh, field of cooperation between Italy and, uh, uh, and Malaysia, protecting both products, of, of course, not only Italian products in Malaysia, but also Malaysian products in, in Italy. And I don't know, maybe the durian will become popular in Italy too at a certain uh, point, and we can eat the durian together with the formaggio piave, you know, that we use to eat uh, in Italy cheese and fruit together. And so maybe there can be some cheeses which, uh, uh, which can be perfectly married to, uh, uh, to the durian. I would like, of course, to, uh, uh, to thank Professor uh, Arfini uh, for his very informative uh, um, presentation about the Italian and the European system and all uh, uh, their implication, as well as the uh, uh, Mrs. Martini about the uh, business mo model in the B uh, B2B uh, sector of the Pia Formaggio Piave I have already mentioned. It. So I will not, uh, uh, we just hope to see Formaggio Piave in Malaysia very soon. Uh, 
so that we can start the experimentation with durian and maybe with other with other Malaysian fruits. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to thank Eric because Eric has really pointed out some important uh, matters, some important uh, problems about Italian imports in uh, uh, in Malaysia. We know perfectly that there are tariffs, but uh, this is not only an Italian matter. This is a European Union matter because. Uh, there is in uh, 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 there is a negotiation underway between uh, the European Union and uh, Malaysia for a free trade uh, agreement. As you know, it's not uh, uh, always very easy to. Uh, it's not always very easy uh, to, to negotiate and to conclude these agreements, which have to take into account a myriad, I would say, of aspects and consideration, um, both from the uh, point of view of the European Union and all the different member states, and from the point of view of, uh, of Malaysia. Uh, but the, po uh, the point that Eric has made is a point of which we are uh, aware and uh, we are already working uh, on that since years. You know, recently, just a few days ago, Malaysia has signed RCEP, uh, uh, which has been uh, a, a treaty which has taken eight years in order to... Uh, 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 to be to be signed, and it will take two more years, probably, in order to be ratified and to be enforced. So we need to be uh, patient from uh, uh, from this point of view, because these uh, agreements take a long, long uh, time. I have noticed also the other point that you made, which is about the origin of the products, in the sense that it's true there are some Italian products that probably re re uh, results arriving from Singapore or from uh, Netherlands and not because they are not arriving directly from, from Italy. This is uh, uh, something that we will take into uh, consideration. Uh, into consideration too and uh, uh, of course I would like to thank you and uh, Alex for all you have done and you are doing and you will uh, do for the Italian products in Malaysia. Uh, I'm happy to hear also that the, the promotion that we did uh, uh, last uh, month uh, in, uh, in Jaya Grocer um, with some authentic Italian products has been, has been useful. So so we will try to repeat it, uh, maybe uh, you know, in, in better conditions. Because, in, in the sense that probably at that point we will not be in MCO, CMCO, or any other form of uh, uh, of limitation, so that we can all enjoy the uh, uh, the Italian products. But I think that today we have done a good job because we have. Uh, <coughs> We have learned very much, we have pointed out, we have focused on some problems and the first uh, thing, uh, uh, and in order to solve a problem, we have first to talk and to, to focus about it. So we are uh, at this point aware of many uh, more aspects of the, the imports of Italian products in, uh, in Malaysia and we can work all uh, together in our respective uh, capacities to give our contribution to, uh, to solve them and in the mutual, and I always want to stress this, in the mutual benefit of our two countries because this is not something that should be benefit only the Italian products. This is something that should benefit Italy, Malaysia, Italian products, Malaysian uh, products and should be mutually beneficial for both of us, Italy and Malaysia at the same time. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you again, all of you. Uh, the webinar ends here. It was a uh, a very good occasion uh, to meet and debate about uh, the issue of uh, geographical indication and see you to the next uh, webinar or if possible if we can uh, uh, meet again uh, physically thanks again uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day thanks ciao, ciao thank you ciao, ciao thank you